sir. Ah. Manscaped. Uh huh. Uh, you know, have you tried the new equipment that's been sent? I'm afraid because it says weed whacker. <laughs> I'm scared. Maven, Manscaped. What are you thinking about Love Manscaped, it. dude? You Love what it. What do you use it for? Necessity. What? What don't I use it for? Put it this way: <laughs> the only hair <laughs> I have on my entire body is these eyebrows. Yeah. That oh. you see. These wow. caterpillars racing to the middle of my nose. That's it. <laughs> that is it. That's all. That's all I have, and that's all I want. That's the so pay- manscaped. There, is you, a must. We were talking before the show. There's nothing worse than just hair. Yeah. Right. Hair on a woman. Hair on a man. It's just bad. Absolutely. And it's the one thing that the older I get, it starts growing more in unwanted areas. Absolutely. I hate it. I'm gonna ask you a question. Oh. Just gonna go out there. Oh boy. Go for it. You're doing a deed. Yes. <laughs> Again, I don't want you to have to admit this because we, as men, we try not to admit this. But if you're going to uh, go do I know a deed it. on a woman, I know would you rather going. have her be hairless or a little hair, racing stripe, or <laughs> racing stripe. full retro bush? <laughs> racing well, stripe. Retro bush is out. Yes, thank you. Retro bush is out. Yeah. Um, I don't mind a small, well-manicured landing strip. <laughs> Every now and then, if it's completely, and I'm talking like baby's ass bald mm. then i i start where is that pedophilia line yeah. that i'm that i'm i don't, I don't wow. want to wander into that that's very interesting like that. i never thought about wow. that. you're a smart dude Holy yeah. shit. so if the landing strip is clean enough for the plane to go in smoothly you're cool with that if the landing strip is has like i said well manicured yeah. you yeah. can see both sides it's not like blinking lights on both I, sides of that plane? i just don't i don't want <laughs> you know i don't want the shrubbery going off into yeah. Unwanted areas on that as gotcha. well. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, look but what you found. Ooh. I got to be all honest gotcha. though. Hey, the, ah. the, the older I get though, I don't. I think I don't think I can be as. Uh, <laughs> I, I found as, it. Have, I found have it. Have you ever gone down there and like just like you, she slowly brings down the underwear? Then what is it? retro? Just Absolutely. Retro? You're like whoa. Wow. Yeah, like, like it pops out. Do you like walk out or what do you do? No, I, try, I muster through. I muster up the <laughs> courage. This is a trooper. Yeah. This is a trooper. Gotta give him a name. Yeah, not all. Not all heroes wear capes. Yeah, I, there you no, go. I, 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 there you listen, can't, I couldn't. I Super couldn't Bush. Say, I couldn't say. Well, <laughs> if you have the same beliefs as Maven, does Manscaped could help you? Absolutely. The weed whacker. Absolutely. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that I may have to like you know go in a room, close the door, and hang out with the weed whacker for a little while. Yeah, I think you're a retro guy, aren't you? I like 70s adult films, if that's what you're getting at. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, with that, we're going to take a quick Batman. commercial break, and anyway. we'll be back with this wrestling icon, Maven. We will see you in a drop kick second. A uh, drop kick. Good evening, everybody. This is your host, ESO, and welcome to the After Show. As always, we have an exciting episode planned for you. Well, hopefully, it's exciting. I'm going to at least try to make it that way. So first off, I got to thank you guys for being here. You fans are amazing. I can't believe the responses we've had, especially for the audio version of the show. Let's keep it up and keep it going strong. First thing I have to do is send a special shout out. I want to thank Mike Monty and Jimmy Farrow for giving me this incredible platform to connect to all of you. And guess what? They have their own show too. Mike Monty and Jimmy Farrow can be found on the Monty and the Farrow show every Thursday live at 9 p.m. on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and the Intuitive app. The Monty and the Farrow Show, that is the must-see TV every Thursday night. They are the world's number one broadcast. Ooh. Oh, and before I get forget it, I, forget about it, I have to promote my sister's show, Antar's Memoirs. You have to check out Mike Havlick. This past week, he was down, he was up here in the Northeast, and he filmed his show with the one and only Jimmy Farrow. It is must-see TV. Mike Havlick's show has come such a long way. Mantor's Memoirs, found here only on the Monty and the Farrow channels. Mike, I can't wait to get a chance to meet you. I heard you were up here. Unfortunately, I had a lot going on last week, and I couldn't make it down to the studio. But when you come back up in the fall for the 90s Wrestling Con, I'm going to make sure I take time out to come and meet you in person. We can record something. You know, go grab a bite to eat. You know, maybe a, a beer or something. But... Hey, I, I, I can't wait to meet you and keep up the great work. You're doing awesome. Awesome. I believe he's up to Mantor's Memoirs number three. Four should be out next week. I cannot wait for it. Oh, so check this out, everybody. I've been going into my local deli and admiring this thing for the last few weeks. And I've been asking the owner for it. I'm like, yo, dude, I'll give you 
I'll give you 50 bucks for it. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. He wouldn't sell it to me, wouldn't sell it to me, wouldn't sell it to me. Well, today it was empty. And I, again, said, listen, bro, it's empty now. Will you sell it to me? He said he finally uh, obliged and he sold it to me. I can't believe I, what I got in my hands. These things are trading for a couple hundred bucks online right now, but this isn't going anywhere. It's staying in my collection. It is the Macho Man Slim Jim Container Sculpture. Dude, check this out. It's the 2020 edition. That's going up on my shelves with some of my other wrestling memorabilia. I can't wait to. Uh, I'm so excited to have this. Yeah, right now it's trading, I believe, between 175 and 200. I'm not selling it. I got it for 50 bucks, which is pretty cool in my eyes. Actually, 50 bucks, and I had to buy the last two Slim Jims that were. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was worth it. So while we're on the subject of the Macho Man, he's going to be the subject of the second segment of this show today. As always, we go over a wrestling magazine of the past, and this week is no different. This week, we have the WWF magazine from July 1990, featuring the one and only Macho Man on the cover. Yes, we will be getting into that when we get back. And then final segment, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about my busy couple weeks and uh, the crazy billiard tournament uh, that I was at this weekend. Not that the tournament itself was crazy, but... Yeah, just some of the events. It was a fun time. It, there were a couple of good stories that we're going to talk about. And then uh, you know, then we're going to wrap it up. So we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto Excellence. Collision Specialists. 631-261-6420. That's 631-261-6420. Auto Excellence. And APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the after show found here only on the Monty and the Pharaoh channels. Ooh, now it's time to take a trip down memory lane to July 1990 with a WWF magazine featuring the Macho King Randy Savage on the cover. The headline is Macho King Randy Savage Determined to Destroy Dusty. We have Ultimate Warrior Raging on Rude. Jake the Snake faces the ear of Bad News Brown. Hacksaw rumbles with the earthquake. The Million Dollar Man spends a rare moment with our reporters. The magazine also features coverage of the Intercontinental Championship Tournament. Oof. So as we open up, of course, we have the table of contents and an ad for this month. It's TCA Travel Agency. That's an ad for Say No to Drugs and WrestleFest. And then Around the Ring this month focuses on the upcoming SummerSlam, where it's expected that Rick Rude will face the Ultimate Warrior. Next, we have The Body Language by Jesse Ventura. This month, he gives credit to Hulk Hogan, saying Hulk Hogan was a true champion. And then he also critiques Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty's match with the Orient Express from WrestleMania 6. He also gets into the fact that Dusty Rhodes has a twin. His name is Playboy Buddy Rhodes. <laughs> Playboy Buddy Rhodes, he had that same type of figure as Dusty Rhodes. He definitely did. Of course, Jesse would say something like that. Next up, we have the Newsbreakers. This month, the earthquake jumps the hulkster on the Brother Love Show. The Brother Love Show, for a show that showed so much love, there seemed to be a lot of violence on that show. <laughs> how many How many times did somebody get attacked on Brother Love Show? <laughs> I don't even know. We should, we should look into that. It's pretty funny. Next, you had personality profile this month featuring the Doctor of Style, the one and only Slick. And he, at this time, was only managing Akeem as the big boss man had turned face. Next article is 
a rare interview with the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. In this interview, he takes the time to rip apart the big boss man for their upcoming feud. Next up is one of the features of this month's magazine. It's the Battle of the Titans. Mr. Perfect wins the Intercontinental Championship against the one and only Tito Santana. This was in an Intercontinental Tag Team Tournament after Jack Tunney declared the title vacant because the Ultimate Warrior had defeated Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 6. So it started off with Brutus Beefcake and Dino Bravo battling to a double I believe it was a double countout. And then you had Rowdy Roddy Piper and Rick Martel battling to a double disqualification. And then Mr. Perfect defeating Superfly Jimmy Snooker. And then Tito Santana going over Akeem. That led to the match between Mr. Perfect and Tito Santana, where Mr. Perfect took the Intercontinental title. Oof. Yes, next we had. The Ravishing Rick Rude's ultimate goal, I'll bring the ultimate warrior to a battle in parts unknown. <laughs> yeah, let's see about that. Rick Rude facing the ultimate warrior at, for their upcoming battle at SummerSlam. Next, of course, we have the merchandise catalog. As always, it features something new, and this month's no different. We've got the Red Rooster t-shirt. I know that had to be a hot seller. I know you guys all had your Red Rooster t-shirts. I bet they I bet they sold like five of them. You had Brutus the Barber Beefcake debuting his new shirt. You had the common man, the plumber, the son of the plumber. You had Dusty Rhodes. Yes, Dusty Rhodes' polka dotted shirt. You had Tito Santana debuting a new shirt, as well as a new shirt for Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Oof, how cool is that? Next is the, the article from the title from the cover page. It's Dusty Rhodes versus the Macho King and how their feud has gotten ugly. And it brings into the, the article, it talks about Sapphire and Sensational Sherry. Yeah, quite, quite, quite an in-depth article and, and definitely worth the time to check out and, and read. Next, you had something that's going to promote the upcoming Earthquake Hacksaw feud. Earthquake's evil envy. Why does he hate Hacksaw Jim Duggan? I don't think there's an, any real reason he hates Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I think he's just told to hate him because of the upcoming feud. Their feud was okay. I really wasn't a big John Tenta fan. I'm, at this point, I really wasn't a Hacksaw Jim Duggan fan either. I, I could have taken it or leave it. At this point, I was more rooting for the heels at this point just because you know, I was getting towards the end of my youth wrestling fandom. <laughs> so, a lethal librato. So you had Rhythm and Blues and the Bushwhackers playing. Uh, the Bushwhackers played us for fools. This is about their match at WrestleMania Six, and you know just the the continuation of that feud coming out of that major event. <clears throat> now, next article is dire predictions, bad news, and J bad news and Jake foresee different futures for one another. This is uh, promoting the feud between these two legends. Now, if you Bad news Brown, bad news Allen, whatever you want to call him. He had never, he never gets the uh the accolades he deserves. This dude was a black belt in judo. He completed in the Olympics. This dude was a bad ass. He was he was good on the mic. Uh he definitely, definitely should have gone farther in the WWF than he than he ended up doing. And he faced another legend and another great one on the mic and Jake the Snake Roberts in this. This was a very, very, very underrated feud by two legends that one, you know, we one didn't get the due he deserved, and one wasted the gifts that he was given. So, you know, two two of my absolute favorites there. That was a great time in wrestling watching those two feud. Bad news, Allen, that or bad news, Brown. That dude was whatever you want to call him. He was bad news, Allen, when he was in the NWA. He became, when he came to WWF, he became bad news, Brown. But that dude was one tough sob. And he was a lot of fun to watch. That back brain kick knocking people out. So <laughs> this month's viewpoint is the big boss man responding to the million dollar man Ted DiBiase. It's basically a counterpoint of the article or the interview that we had earlier in the magazine with Ted DiBiase talking about feuding with the big boss man. This is more of the big boss man's viewpoint of it. So 
not a bad article. Just, uh, j- just you get point counterpoint. That's that's pretty much what you had. This month we this month's caught in the act features Hillbilly Jim and Howard Finkel doing the two step or do si do around the ring. It says WWF ring announcer, a gentleman known worldwide as the Fink, apparently masters a fine two step as country boy Hillbilly Jim takes him through the motions of backwood dancing. And judging by the Fink's expressions, he's obviously enjoying every minute of it. <laughs> he's wearing uh, Hillbilly Jim's hat in that. You know, uh, on the opposite page, you can uh, order your own souvenir program from WrestleMania 6, where the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan fought for the uh, uh, unification of the WWF World and Intercontinental title. And the Ultimate Warrior ended up going over and had to relinquish the WWF Intercontinental title. And that's why Mr. Perfect got it in this. Uh, 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 in this magazine, so what a what a cool magazine! That was a lot of fun. There really wasn't as much in depth action as in other months, but hey, uh, either way, it's such a blast going through these memories from the past. And on that note, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna wrap it up. I'll see you in a minute, Jimmy. I gotta take a dump. No, I mean, I need a dumpster. (sighs) Well, for all those needs, you need to call Big V Dumpster Rental, Long Island, New York, 631-900-DUMP. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto Excellence, Collision Specialist, 631-261-6420. That's 631-261-6420. Auto Excellence. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the after show found here only on the Monty and the Pharaoh channels. Yeah. So I have to apologize. The last couple of weeks, I have been a little on the busy side, and I haven't been able to get the show out on time. And uh, last week, I couldn't even get a show going. But uh so what was happening last week is, as you guys know, I, I bartend several nights a week, and I also have my own small business where I do custom apparel. I got I, I got a lot of jobs recently, and you know, some of them have been some pretty big ones. One of my favorites every year, I do the, these jobs for the local pool teams as they go up to a regional tournament up in Albany. This year, I wasn't on any of the pool teams, but I had several clients with shirts up there, and I wanted to go up and hang out because I have a lot of friends that play pool, and you know, it's it's always a crazy fun time. So. I really went up. I went up there for fun and to hang out with some of my friends. So, uh, let's see. All started. I, I got up there on on Saturday night about seven p.m. for it was pretty much the uh, quarterfinal round of, uh, of the tournaments. They were they were starting. It was a nine ball and an eight ball team tournaments. I had friends in both sides, so I was going back and forth and taking pictures of some of the the teams that I have that were wearing my apparel that I had done. It was a lot. It was pretty cool. A lot of fun. Well, plus I got to collect some money from them, which was it's always fun when you get cash in hand. But uh, oh, that was that was great. But at, towards the end of the night, the bar starts running out of alcohol. Well, we're gonna call this bar the Shilton because every which way you turn, there was a band aid and something was broken. I mean, the air conditioning didn't work. The vending machines ran out of anything. The ATMs ran out of money. You have to realize these are pool players. Pool players do. A few things. They gamble and they drink. And they gamble for big money, so they want cash there. And they drink a lot. So they want alcohol there. They should have learned this by now. We've been going to this Hilt- this Shilton for quite a few years, and it really hasn't gotten any better. If anything, it's, it, the service has kind of gotten worse. At the- now, pool players also tend to drink more of a premium spirit, not shit stuff. Uh, they tend to have a few dollars in their pocket. Most of these guys aren't poor. There's a lot of you know, family-oriented people that, that do that. There's money in this. So ATMs, no money. Alcohol, empty. This is the second night of the tournament. There's a full another night that's that's about to go on. So the, the tournament winds down. It's about 12.05, 12.10 in the morning. The upstairs bar, all the alcohol is gone. The downstairs bar, all the alcohol is gone. Unfortunately, this part of Albany, there's really not many other bars out there, and most of the things are closed down early because there's there's some issues in the area. 
Um, don't know why we always choose this Shelton, but that's what, this, this Shelton, but we always do. So what, what ends up happening? Oh, well, there's a courtyard out back. Pool players took it over. Next thing you know, there's whiskey tasting at this table. There's a bar over at this table. There's dancing. There's music. There's a couple hundred. Oh, everybody's outside having a party when the Hilton could have been making ridiculous money off of us if they would have just restocked the ATMs and restocked the bar. No, instead, we've all gone up to our rooms, grabbed all of our alcohol, all of our beer, and we're all sharing it downstairs and having a grand old time. It's freaking, it's a freaking blast. These whiskey tastings. Oh my gosh. So this this ties in with our newest sponsor, Jim Beam. So I sat down at this table for this whiskey tasting, and it was Baker's uh, Limited Edition Reserve by Jim Beam. Oh, my God. It was so smooth. It was so sweet. Oh, that was amazing. What a night. What a night. It was uh, quite a late night. It, I, I ended up turning in. Everything was still bumping at 4 a.m., but I knew I wanted to get up relatively early and shoot some pool with uh, with some people and uh so i i, I ended up turning in and you know, going upstairs and I, ha I had a roommate up there and he wasn't back to the room yet either so i'm like well last i had seen him it was about 3 30 and he had gone up to some room with a bunch of people they were playing video games hanging out whatever they were gonna do no idea get into that again in a second but i turn in i wake up the, the next morning a little hurt. I had to get. I got up about eight thirty, nine o'clock. I jumped in the shower. Once I got a little bit of coffee in me, I was okay. I felt a little bit better. And then uh, I, I look over, and the, the the roommate had at some point come in. I have no idea when he when he had come in, but now he's starting to to come too because he's in these tournaments and he's got to get downstairs. I look over at him, and he's he's standing up, and he's got eyeliner and mascara, and I'm like. What the hell happened to you? I've known this kid for years, and this is not like him to wear to wear eyeliner, mascara, makeup, anything like that. So I'm looking, I'm like, what the hell happened? And he's like, uh, I forgot about that. <laughs> so, oh, the culmination. So now the guy spends the next 20 minutes or so trying to wash his face, get it all off. Uh, I go downstairs. I grab uh, grab some. Uh, breakfast from Dunkin' Donuts. Just start hanging out with pe some people, you know, shooting shooting the shit, watching the tournament that's going on. He comes downstairs, the makeup went off. He had to spend the entire day Sunday with that makeup on. Best part is he's a pretty well known dude, so everybody noticed, and everybody came up and made a comment. Hey, dude, if you want to make, wear makeup, whatever, I don't care what you do. But if it's not in your nature and somehow you end up caught with makeup for the whole weekend, it's kind of hilarious. It was it was a I felt bad for the guy, but he brought it on himself. I still have no idea what happened in that room to convince him to to wear makeup uh, while they were playing video games. But hey, what, whatever. I know that uh, I know there was a lot of alcohol flowing that night, though, so he may not have had a choice. He may have passed out. And that's what he woke up to. I have no idea. But it was it was hilarious either way. So <laughs> anyway, that was uh, that was my story from from Albany. And uh, that was the culmination of a very, very hectic couple of weeks of work. And uh, it was nice to get to sit and lay back for a, for a few days up there and watch a watch a pool tournament happen. The cool one of the other cool parts is the team from the Shamrock Tavern and I did their shirts team. I don't give a what a few years ago. I was part of that team and we went to Vegas, but they made it all the way to the finals. They lost in the finals in the last match in sudden death. I felt so bad for them, but they made it all the way to the end. So I got some pictures of my shirts in the finals up there in, in Albany for the regional competition. Congratulations to one of the other teams up there that I'm friends with, Fresh Cakes. Congratulations! I know you guys are going to Albany. You know, Dougie and and Sean and Ashma, congrats, guys! Way to go! And hey, hopefully next year I get a chance to go again too. Well, that's about all the time we have tonight, so I'm going to start wrapping this up. But uh, don't forget to check out all the other shows on the network: Money and the Pharaoh and Mantar's Memoirs. And don't forget to download the Intuitive app because it's such a great great app and a great platform to watch all these all these shows and they've got all kinds of movies and other originals and old tv shows and things going on there don't forget to, to check that out 
But in the meantime, I got to get out of here. Mike and Jimmy, thank you for letting me do this. I can't wait to get down and visit you guys again. It's going to be sooner than later. And on that note, I am out of here. Later.